Live from Salt Lake City, this is Heart of the Matter, where we do all we can to worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm your host, Sean McCraney. We're going to begin with a word of prayer offered by our guest tonight, David Valdez. Brother, before I introduce you, pray. All right. Father, we come to you at this time. We thank you. We praise you. Abba, we ask at this time that you would help us here this evening. We, we pray that we would say something that would touch someone's heart. We would ask, Father, that you would anoint us, that as far as that we would speak for things that be of you. We're here just to lift up your name and to glorify your name. Father, we just ask that you would be here and that you would accompany us. We pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, my brother. And we're going to understand and learn all about who David is and, and uh, why we're so fortunate to have him as a guest tonight. But first, coming up next week, Dave Donaldson, part two talking about forgiveness in the prison system. And uh, then uh, following that on June 4th, Spencer Cole. Now we cover the gamut of guests here. Spencer Cole is uh, as a bachelor's, a master's and PhD all in philosophy. Uh, his specialty is meta ethics and normative ethics. And this dude is the most intimidating on paper uh, individual relative to intelligence. It's going to be fascinating. He's a former Mormon, but he's written a paper uh, about a, a very philosophical uh, paper that is astute as to why he can no longer participate in that religion anymore. He's written some really, I mean, he's been published in Oxford Press, publications everywhere. So that's on the December, I mean, on December, June 4th. And then on uh, June 11th, we're going to have Tanner and Samantha from Zelf on the Shelf. Uh, and that's going to be our foray into a younger generation and what those guys are all about. So that's going to be interesting as well as tonight. So a couple things and we'll get right to David. Recently in my hometown, we had a local pastor uh, who for the past 14 years, has he's been accused of molesting children and teens. And to me, it's just another indicator of why organized religion is going to have to get in line with what God has wanted all along. And that is for there to be a direct relationship with individuals through the Spirit as He writes His laws upon our hearts. And it's not in religious empires, which most men and women seek to build once they get get something rolling. Uh, the more school shootings that happen, or the more shootings that happen, and the more uncontrolled communicable diseases that happen, and the more molestations, and the more demands for money, and allegiance to the institution, the more politically divisive the world be, uh, becomes, and the more corporations step in and help fill the gap for uh, charitable giving, the more corporations step in and do that, we're going to see uh, religious empires closing their doors. The younger generation is not going to put up with the BS of corporate religion. So get ready for it now, and let's just deconstruct uh, uh, what shouldn't have become built up in the first place and get rid of that game plan. There's that. Our special guest, David Valdez, really interesting. And again, just a little teaser, not going to tell you why. He's going to tell you why. But before getting to him, I want to point something out. We recently had an active LDS man named Kwaku L on the show, and he sort of criticized evangelicals for our failure to get along. His criticisms are valid. Evangelicals, reformed, especially reformed believers and zealous uh, fanatics uh, are often at each other's throats. Uh, Kwaku intimated that because James White and myself disagree over doctrine, that uh, that is a point in fact. Look at you and James, he said. And uh, listen, and I pointed out to Kwaku that there's zero division with me, with uh, James White or Jeff Durbin or, 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 or Matt Slick or anyone else as my brother. Zero. I would embrace them completely as my brother, fully in the faith. But the divisions come from their side, not mine. And um, they simply divide against me because they don't agree with how I see the faith. I mention this all here because with us tonight is a man with whom, from what I can sort of tell, I don't know much about uh, uh, David and what they do, uh, but I probably have little in common with David in terms of praxis or practice. Uh, and maybe we may not even agree uh, theologically on a lot of things. Um, very little, perhaps. Nevertheless, there was a, a call put out from the people in his church saying, we're looking for a building. And, uh, and so we responded and said, you can use ours. 
And um, uh, we at campus believe, we truly believe that everyone has the right to worship God as they see fit. And we are to be loving, supportive Christians along the way. We're not going to vet people over doctrinal and practical uh, differences. We, and we believe in receiving them without conditions. So since around August, I think, uh, they have met in the building here that we meet in. And they come in here on Saturday and, and, uh, because that's their Sabbath. And uh, we've never asked for money or rent. They're respectful of the property. They clean it after they use it. We have this reciprocal relationship that has never been built on contracts. It's built on mutual respect that they have something that they love about God and they pursue him that way and we do it our way, but we meet in the same darn building, you see, without any type of corporate stuff going on. And the reason I say this is not to be boasting for David or me or anything like that, but to say it can work. It yes. can happen. It, it can. can happen. And so tonight I welcome the pastor teacher leader of this group to come and tell us you're going to have to say the name because I didn't pick it up. The I know David and I know people who come to the church, but I can't say the name and he's going to have to tell us. But, but tell us the name. Okay. Hello. Beth Leckham is what it is. Okay. That's the congregation of the house of bread. Congregation of the House of Bread, and that's what he's representing tonight to tell us all about that and what it is and how they see uh, the faith. But first, as we typically do, spend the first few minutes, David, telling us about yourself. I was born... I was born actually in Salt Lake City in 1962. I was born here. I've been here all my life. I grew up as far as off of 2nd uh, West, now 3rd West, 13th South. So I've been here all my life so you know went to school here worked here I'm here married here just you know life is here and so anyway as far as um, I actually came into the faith I would say well let's back up a little bit I actually grew up Catholicism okay that's what we did okay okay that was um, that's just what we did as far as uh, being a Catholic we would go to catechism that's what we did mm -hmm. And then, as far as as I begin to get older and stuff like that, I begin to get away from that. We actually had moved from Salt Lake to actually uh, West Jordan, or not West Jordan, uh, West Valley. And uh, what happened was is that uh, at the age of 14, uh, we went to a small little church. And what it was, it was they called it a Pentecostal church, a Holy Roly church, or if any of you have ever known that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was a lot different for us as far as being Catholic and then going to as far as this little Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's uh, where I first actually met, as far as, uh, I call him Yeshua, but Jesus. Mm -hmm. I have first met him as far as him having a personal relationship with him. Wow. I was kind of a mess at the age of 14. You know, big world, not knowing who I am in this world. But there was something that as far as this preacher that was preaching, that as far as the, the Lord was to come, and heck, I thought that he was actually going to come that night. Wow. I said, well, if he's coming, I want to go and I want to get on board. So at the age of 14, I actually accepted the Lord, like I said, as my personal Savior. That began as far as my journey into evangelical or Pentecost. Okay? Wow. Yeah. So, and since, since that time, I've been involved as far as with Pentecostal for about 40, I was looking back, about 43 years. Wow. Yeah. 43 years walking in his faith. Um, I was actually in my youth. I actually used to travel around as far as in the state of Utah. I was a I was an, an evangelist, well, youth uh, pastor. Wait, how old? Uh, I was actually tw about twenty one. So you're a youth pastor, twenty one, uh, charismatic. Yeah. Uh, preaching around Utah. Are yeah. these like revivals? Or? I would do revivals. Okay. Yeah, a lot of our churches that were around as far as the state of Utah, I would go in. I would hold revivals. Um, I'm not here for the money. I wasn't there for the money. Sure. The only thing There's not is much I, money in it, is well, there? <laughs> well, it's not about the money because right. the word's already being prostituted anyway. Right. It was about as far as me giving my heart yeah. and doing what I felt like I needed to do. So I would go and I would uh, just go preach as far as these revivals at these churches. Mm. And then as far as as things begin to go, I actually begin to go out of state. Mm. So I've been preaching for some time. I'm, mm. I'm a slash preacher teacher. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm. Love to teach. I see. I do love to teach, but I do have a niche to preach the Word of God. I, I miss it. I see. I really do. You miss that part. I miss that part. So we'll find out about why you miss that part and what you're doing now. But 
one thing when it comes to the Pentecostal, for those of you who don't know, uh, when we say charismatic, does this, in, is this, I guess the way I can only say it the way I understand it, would this be hyper uh, charismatism with I would say that, slain in the spirit? Well, we're talking about as far as the born again experience. Okay. Okay, you ever heard of born again Christians? I've heard it. Yeah, that's what we were, born again Christians. Okay. Okay, being born again a, a second time, right? Right. Because we know that man's born in this world. He's born into sin, but like Yeshua talked about Nicodemus, the second man be born. Okay. Again, he shall not enter to the So we believed in the born again experience. Okay. And was that manifested uh, at the revivals through any certain way? Well, we're having a mic problem and a Sean problem. We'll fix the mic problem first. Not good. Hold on one second. Technical problems are like rust problems on a boat. <laughs> With us, they're never ending. But we get through them, right? We get through them. We're good? Okay, we're good. So uh, back to the revivals. You're 21. You're preaching. Yeah, I'm preaching. And, and are, again, I'm just curious. So I know from your background, are we talking about the, uh, the Pentecostal experience of speaking in tongues, yeah. slain in the Spirit? Yeah. And were those things, in your opinion, then... And now manifestations of, did they have to happen for someone to show that they had been born from above to speak in the tongues? Well, we felt that as far as unless one began to speak in tongues, that was the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. 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 Yeah. So that's what we held. We okay. held to that view. Do you still hold to that view? Well, that view right there, I believe that as far as looking back, as far as at the speaking in tongues, looking back at Acts, the second chapter. Mm hmm. To me, as far as, as I get older and I begin to look into this, I think that as far as like, it talks about as far as like Peter and all these men begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the book of Acts, he talks about as far as that there were devout Jews mm -hmm. all over the place. He says, how is it that these are Galileans mm -hmm. and yet they're speaking in our tongue? Mm -hmm. That's the unknown tongues that we're talking about. Sure. Okay. They're Galileans. They're speaking as far as various languages. Why are they speaking in tongues? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to ask ourselves, first of all, what was Pentecost? Mm -hmm. And what was as far as the people doing and why were they coming to Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We have to ask these questions. Sure. So it is a requirement for all the Jews to go to Jerusalem three times a year. Right. Okay? And that's uh, as far as the Passover, mm -hmm. Feast of Passover, okay? Or, or as far as the unleavened bread. And then it's got, you got Shavuot, mm -hmm. which is Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the Sukkot, those are three uh, feasts that as far as are required for all male Jews to go. Okay, I'm going to reel you back in. Just okay, reel me in. So uh, you're, are you saying now still, just a simple, do you believe that the speaking in tongues as Messianic is necessary to evidence someone has been filled with the Holy Spirit? I do, okay. at this present time, okay. yeah. We'll get to that with your practice as okay. Messianic. So after you're, uh, you're on the tour, you're doing it, what happened? 40 well, years, and then you don't look old enough for all these years, 21 nah, and 40. I still look like I'm 21 and older, don't you I? You do, you do. <laughs> so then what, what occurs? How, what did, how did you make the shift from what you were doing okay. to preaching in campus on an afternoon to something called Messianic? Okay, this is the story. Um, I actually had a... Probably, I would say I was probably in my 30s. I ended up getting divorced, okay? And anyway, as far as in the congregation that I attended, you couldn't get married a second time. Mm. So here I am, as far as a young man, uh, I was actually as far as uh, separated for five years and so forth, trying to live as far as this life that I thought that I had to live, right? Mm -hmm. And anyway, I told my mom and stuff like that, you know, I'm going to go try to serve God. And, and I actually went to another uh, Pentecostal place, mm. I'm in search as far as of the Father. I'm looking, is there hope for me? Mm. Can I actually be as far as in this condition that I am and marry again and be mm. okay? Mm. So anyway, I found as far as a lovely woman, okay, which is my wife, Cindy, sitting in the congregation. Um, I actually um, had a really good relationship with as far as her mom. Mm. Uh, me and her actually became uh, best of friends. Soon I would marry as far as my wife, and she actually was, uh, she was my mom. Hmm. Her and I had a very good relationship. She would always call me up, hey, Dave. She goes, would you come over? Would you do some coffee? 
Me and her were to get into, as far as the Bible, we would open it. She loved the Bible. I loved the Bible, so we had something in common that causes us to look into the Scripture, right? But anyway, as far as down the road some, that as far as she actually had, uh, got diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And anyway, I told as far as my mother-in-law, I said, you know, Mom, I will walk with you on this journey, okay, as far as I can walk with you. Mm. And we did. So what we decided to do is uh, the last years of her life, we had told ourselves that we're going to go ahead and we're going to put as far as our life on hold, and we're going to live for her. Mm. So we decided to go ahead. This last year is her year. Mom, what is it you want to do? So we did everything that she wanted to do. Nice. She had asked me the question. She goes, Dave, she goes, would you actually officiate my service? Oh, that's a bittersweet for me. Mm. Um, yeah, Mom, I really don't want to officiate as far as a funeral service. But loving her, it's a bittersweet for me, but I would be honored to do this. And so, anyway, as far as, uh, you know, we walk with her to the last of her, her life. And uh, as far as I end up officiating her service, um, that was actually part of as far as what's going to bring us into as far as this messianic. Okay, so I end up preaching as far as the funeral. It was several years after that that my sister-in-law, this is, this is all my wife's family, got diagnosed with cancer as well. Mm. And anyway, as far as uh, I already knew that we've been down this journey, we're, we're going through it again. And it's been very soon. Matter of fact, my sister-in-law had actually died as far as when my mom, on that same day, January 1st, and I believe it was like four years apart from each other. Same day? Same day. Wow. Yeah. So you walked with her through her cancer. Yes. What had happened was is that uh, the Lord had already laid on my heart uh, a message. He didn't ask, actually ask me that as, uh, if I would actually officiate her service. But there, the Lord had already laid something in my heart. Mm -hmm. I began already to develop this and work on this. Mm. And then I would say probably about two weeks, maybe three weeks before she would pass, mm -hmm. that she had asked me. She goes, I haven't officially asked you but would you officiate my service? Mm. And I told her the, the same thing that I told my, my, my mother-in-law, that as far as yes, I would, mm. it, it's a bittersweet for me, but I would be honored to actually officiate your service. Mind you that I haven't been preaching at this time. I've been out of it. Okay. Uh, because I was in a divorce situation. I got married again. I didn't think I can get back in it. So I'm wrestling with this whole uh, doctrine, right? And anyway, as far as, as I officiated the service, I had as far as the, he, I guess, it, what do I want to call him? He's a, he's a mortician. Mm -hmm. He's there. They got the coffin there and everything. I begin to preach. And um, I'm seeing him crying. Mm -hmm. Tears coming down his eyes. Because I'm preaching as far as what I feel, what God had placed on my heart. Mm -hmm. And I, we call this the anointing, right? Mm hmm I'm preaching under the anointing, and this guy is crying. He sees funerals every day. Mm. He goes all the time, but he's crying. Something's happening in his heart. He comes, he talks to me after the service, tears in his eyes. He goes, I know. I've never heard anything like this, but there's something about this. Mm. And anyway, as far as uh, I, we end up going to as far as, check this out. We end up going to as far as the um, cemetery. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened was is that my mother or excuse me, my sister-in-law wanted to be buried right next to her mom. Mm -hmm. My wife works for the city of South Jordan. And they had looked into all that, and they said, as far as these plots are already bought, you cannot have it, but you can probably have maybe four or five down mm. from where she's at. Well, the day of the funeral, as we're coming out of the hearse, and we're carrying the casket over our shoulders, and as we begin to walk down, we set her down as far as on her plot. My brother-in-law asked the question, he goes, hey, Cindy, of my wife she goes I thought that as far as that sis wasn't going to be married uh, buried uh, to mom mm -hmm. well she's not supposed to he lifted up as far as that drape there and right next to her was as far as her mom wow yes. beautiful and so anyway as far as uh, it was a long day Tarson day um, I uh, when we went home and stuff I told the wife I need to go lay down because it was taxing on us that we had to prepare for another funeral Sure. Um, so just a lot of weight that one would carry, right? Mm -hmm. And after I had delivered, I just felt a lot of weight just kind of being 
taken off me, but I told my wife, I need to go lay down and rest. And anyway, um, when I was doing this, um, actually the Lord had spoke to me. Mm. And he had actually had told me that as far as that, uh, all that as far as that he was doing with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, he goes, it was me. I knew that I was a preacher. Mm. I knew that I was anointed to preach. But I had got away from it. And the Lord began to tell me that he used them to get me. Mm. What had happened was prior before uh, my mother-in-law had passed away, they went to Jerusalem. They got as far as a bunch of stuff they brought back. And anyway, as far as what was funny about all this is that uh, here we have as far as a keeper, I got a prayer shot, all this stuff, and the Lord's reminding me it wasn't her, it was me. Mm. And come to find out that as far as when the wife and I, we got married, we actually had a Jewish wedding. We didn't plan it out. We actually tried to get my brother to actually marry us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He couldn't marry us because of where he was at in his condition saying you're in double marriage. Mm -hmm. But my, uh, my, uh, my uncle, well, my wife's uncle, and that he actually married us and they performed a Jewish wedding. And anyway, the Lord began to remind me of this. They had actually put a prayer shot on us. We were underneath the hoopah. We began to say as far as the, the vows of Ruth. Okay. We began to say these vows. And, and anyway, it was, a, it was a Jewish wedding that we didn't know that we were doing. Hmm. Just the vows and everything. And so it, it led me to believe that God was already orchestrating and he was moving. Got it. Okay. Something at this time was being awakened in me. I had to talk to my cousin. Now, let, I'm going to tell you something that as far as uh, my cousin began to tell me that as far as that he found out through DNA that we were Jewish. Whatever, cousin. I, I don't believe it. No, I'm, uh, I'm Spanish. That's what I am. I have nothing to do with the Jews. Hmm. And he told me that as far as that uh, he did some DNA, he goes, hey, Dave, he goes, he goes we're Jewish. Hmm. No, we ain't Jewish. So I decided I'm going to go get me a DNA test and I'm going to find out. So I ended up getting a DNA test. I ended up, uh, you know, my wife didn't really know what was going on, but I knew something was going on. I wanted to take a test. I wanted to confirm this. Anyway, this is prior before all this would happen about as far as this funeral, right? And it was the day of the funeral and all that, and all that happened that I decided I want to go find out about my results. Hmm. As soon as I found out that the results that I had Jewish heritage in me, I began to weep. I began to cry. And that's when he came down and he downloaded some information about me. My wife came in. You know, I've been crying hysterically. I couldn't even talk to her for mm. a long time. Mm. We're talking probably about a good week before words could even begin mm. to get out. And so he downloaded information to me about as far as what he was wanting from me, right? Mm. Hey, that we have Jewish heritage. And, and, and not only that, as far as that what he did, it was him that was orchestrating. Then he told me that he was faithful even in death. Mm. Remember, my sister-in-law wanted to be married, uh, be buried right next to as far as her mother. Sure. And he accomplished that. Praise God. He goes, he accomplished that as far as in my service, in my ministry. It's not mine, it's his. Mm -hmm. I'm just being obedient. But he used all this to bring us about to us to begin this journey. So how did you begin it? That's how I began it. I actually uh, began to listen to some uh, Michael Rood, okay, they're Messianic Jews. I began to listen to all this stuff, and then the Lord had spoke to me, and he told me, hey, Dave, it's time to go back up to the mountains. Mm. What do you mean? It's time to go back up to the mountain, because in the mountain is the pureness of the word. Mm. In other words, like when, when Jehovah began to speak to Moshe, when it first was uttered out of his mouth, is the most purest form. Okay. So we know that when water comes down at a time of its origin, it comes down, it's pure. Mm. But as it begins to descend from as far as the mountain, it goes into streams, rivers, it gets a little more mucky, mm. right? So we know that as far as for all these centuries and all this, we got 50,000 religions, mm. something's wrong. Mm. Paul says that we should walk by the same rule. We should mind the same things. Mm. Are we minding the same things? Are we walking by the same, same rule? That 50,000 re religions, I doubt it. Mm. Something went wrong. I see. So the Lord began to tell me it's time to go back up to the mountains and to look for the pureness of the word. So I, he began to wake me up three o'clock in the morning. Okay. This is three in the morning. He would wake me up, Dave, uh, time to get up. Well, I don't want to get up. My flesh didn't want to respond to that. Sure. 
And so he would wake me up every morning. And then finally, I, I had told myself, you know what? You have my undivided attention. Obviously, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're speaking. What is it you want? It's like Samuel, so keep going. Yeah. yeah. So I begin to get up. I actually would get up early in the morning. I had as far as a hat, and I had a light in there. I would sit down, and I would begin at Genesis, Bereshit 101, and begin to read the Torah. Okay? He would take me verse by verse. I would just begin to read and just take that in. 3 o'clock in the morning, that's me and him. So let me interrupt for a second. So were you under the understanding that as this process was going on between God and you, that you were helping solve a, a problem between the 50,000 different denominations, that you were actually coming back to the truth of something that had been missed uh, for over this period sure. of time? Okay. Yeah, I All do right. believe that. Okay. I believe that as far as that when he calls, I respond, and I believe as far as by divine appointments. Okay. I believe that as far as our steps have been ordered by, by the Lord. Okay. And so I just happened to be the one that just responding, right? Sure. And so now, as far as as we begin to get in this walk, eyes begin to be open. I begin to see where I was at, 43s in Christianity, and as far as where we're going, right? The whole purpose as far as the Messiah coming in Ezekiel 37, it says that as far as that the two houses, Israel and Judah, would be one in his hands. Mm -hmm. We know that as far as Yeshua right now has come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, mm -hmm. as well as with, with, with Judah. This is his purpose and this is his function. So we know that he's going. He says that he would go to the lost sheep. He would go to the ends of the earth and he would gather the scattered. Mm -hmm. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also will I bring that there'll be one shepherd and one mm -hmm. fold. So he was speaking to the house of Yehuda. Mm -hmm. Okay? Referring to, he came to them, but he says, other sheep I have are not here. We have to understand the story in the book of Kings. What happened under the leadership of King David, all as far as the 12 houses are the 12 tribes of Israel united. Solomon, they were all united in, under one house. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until Solomon would pass away, his son Rehoboam would now, as far as begin to take the reins, that as far as the kingdoms would divide. You had Ter uh, Jeroboam who would take as far as the northern tribes, the ten. Mm -hmm. And then as far as you had Rehoboam the, who would actually take as far as Benjamin and Yehuda. Mm -hmm. The nations were divided. Okay. Okay? So now you got a divided house. And so it's been divided all this time. I see. Okay. So now Yeshua has come on the scene because in Ezekiel 37, it says that when the Mashiach comes, mm -hmm. that he would gather both houses together in one. Sure. Okay. So we believe as far as that when Mashiach would come, that there was a restoration of all things. Okay. Like Saul, or excuse me, uh, uh, Shaul, the apostle Paul, while speaking that it's the restoration of all things. That's what's happening. There's a restoration. Okay. So the Messiah is actually is the one that's gone out to the ends of the earth. I believe that as far as us that, who are believers, we're hearing his voice. Okay. He goes, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they'll not follow. We're hearing his voice, and what is he doing? He's reconciled both houses. So let me ask you, interrupting again, uh, and, and I'm going to slow you down because you are a preacher, uh, and yeah. you <laughs> are a teacher, and so most people aren't tracking with what you're saying because they don't spend time in Kings and they don't spend time in Ezekiel and they don't know about the right. Southern Northern. They don't get all that. Right. So we're kind of, I'm trying to going to get to try to see about what makes you and what you're doing unique, different, and maybe um, superior, if we could use that word to what's going on in evangelicalism. I don't, wouldn't say superior. I just feel that as far as we are just a piece. Okay. We'll get to it. Uh, we'll get to that, that point, but so let me ask you um, the messianic part. You have come through. The Lord is leading you. You're, you're now starting to focus more, apparently, with the light on your head, the Old Testament. No, actually, I, I'm, studying, I'm studying the Tanakh as well as the Brit Hadashah, all of it. Okay. The whole thing. You're going to have to, you're gonna have to uh, people don't speak Hebrew either. Okay, the New Testament. Thank That's you. Both, both Old and New Testament, sorry. Okay, it's okay. And uh, although it's funny because Jeremiah 31 calls the New Testament when God writes on our heart, yes. not necessarily a book. So I'm interested right. in your take on that. Yeah, Jeremiah 31, 31. That's we'll right. get into there, yes. Yeah. So you are moving forward in this. And then how did you, you come to start to start to preach again and teach here and the other places you've been? And what year was this? This actually was uh, probably only about a little over a year ago. We, oh. were, we were involved with the congregation because I got in this walk probably about, it's been about four years now. Okay. Okay. 
I got into this walk about four years ago, but okay, like I said, that as far as that, uh, when the Lord was spoke to me, yeah. I used to get up, well, not used to, but I get up four o'clock in the morning, yeah. every morning, why four, four is the door, okay, it's the Dalit, the fourth letter of the Hebrew up, four is the it's door. the door. And so anyway, I would get up four o'clock in the morning, and I'm falling on my face, and I'm praying, Father, I'm, I, may, I, I'm, I got Jewish heritage in me. Mm. Then I found out, not only do I have Jewish heritage, I found out that I'm Kohanim, which I'm priest mm. of, of the sons of Aaron, okay? Mm. Cohen? We, we, yeah, Cohen. That actually, as far as we did the DNA, we went through family tree DNA, and inside there, there's some projects I ended up putting as far as my DNA. They did what they did. Came back that as far as that I am actually Sephardic, Kohan, okay. Kohanim. All right. I'm praying as far as in my office early in the morning, Father, what headship am I going to uh, go under? What am I going to do? And anyway, what had happened was we had scheduled in the conferences. This is in L.A., and it was, a, it was called The Call. And what it was is there was probably about 80, 90,000 people that would be coming from all over the world to L.A., and it so happened that we end up going on a Shabbat, and it ended up being actually a biblical new year. So mind you, I'm learning all this stuff, and I'm freaking out, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in a new movement and a new thing going on. God's showing me revelation. Mm -hmm. We're inside as far as this conference, about 80,000 people. It's raining on us. And we had been there as far as probably about four or five hours at this time. I, I told my wife, I'll be back. I end up wanting to go to the restroom. I seen a Spanish fella. And I began to talk to him, and I, I told him as far as, you're Sephardic, you're Spanish Jew. Mm. And as I began to talk to him about as far as what was going on, as far as with the Sephardic, they're coming to the understanding mm -hmm. who they are. What had happened was, to my right, there were actually two uh, Jewish, two Jewish, uh, they're actually, they were called Anim. Mm. I didn't know this at the time. They're Over here what? speaking, they were actually priests. Mm. These guys came from Jerusalem to as far as this conference, mm. and they were actually sons of Aaron. Mm. Okay, mind you, I don't believe in coincidence. Mm -hmm. I believe in divine origin. One question, just to interrupt. How do they know they're sons of Aaron with the genealogies being destroyed in 70 AD? Well, I think that they're holding true to as far as their genealogy, what they perceive, okay. Well, where would they get it? I don't know. But I'm just saying as far as, I do believe that as far as they understand that they were, they were Kohen. Okay. Okay. Whatever. So, so I'm anyway. I'm just curious about okay. that. Okay. And anyway, as far as that, what happened was is that these guys came over. They heard us speaking and stuff. And I began to tell them about a cousin of mine that I had, my cousin had told us of another cousin that was actually Kohen. Mm. Okay. Told these gentlemen this. And what happened was these guys actually began to pray over us in Hebrew as far as the Kolonim blessing, mm. the ironic blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Nobody knew mm. what I'd been asking for. But mm. to me, that was a confirmation to me. So then uh, a year ago, you started doing, you, how did you start it? Did you just put an announcement out? No, what happened was we actually, for a good year, we were looking for actually a congregation that was going back to the roots of the faith, getting back into the Hebrew text. Okay. Okay. And so we actually, after a year of looking, that we actually found a congregation that we began to congregate with a bunch of people. Okay. After probably about a year, that dismantled. Okay. Oh, okay. And so I had felt, hey, you know what? I need to pick this up um, as far as we can't just let it fall. Good. Let's just continue on. Even though that we don't have a leader, I'll step in and I'll just do what I do. I teach. That's what I do. Beautiful. And so we had as far as Robin, as far as from our group, that got in contact with you. Got it. Okay. And that's how that we made it to this place. And, and here we are on the stage. And here we are on the stage. I would like to actually thank you for uh, allowing us to be here and to be part of this congregation. You, it's as much yours as it is mine, my brother. And I sincerely mean that. I think you know that. Yes, I do know that. Thank you. I'm going to read from your website. And it says, we meet at 1 p.m. each Shabbat. That's Sabbath, right? Yeah. Uh, for fellowship, Torah study, and praise and worship. Now, all, I'm going to read these segments and just ask you questions to help our audience. When it says Torah study, you're, are you including the um, New Testament, what we would call the New Testament? I do. I go into as far as the New Testament. Okay. I look for Yeshua in, in as far as the old. I see. And I'll tell you why. Luke, the 24th chapter, Yeshua says, why he was on the road of Emmaus and what had happened he just got through as far as okay there was Passover mm -hmm. he was already crucified and then he had already resurrected and then there was on the road of Emmaus with these men and he mm -hmm. said do you not know 
what happened these days? Well, mm -hmm. they didn't know that they were understood that that was Yeshua next to them. Okay. And as Yeshua began to speak to them the words, he said that all scripture concerning me, how that the Mashiach must suffer these things and enter into his glory. I see. So when he said all scripture, mm -hmm. he was referring to Tanakh. Tanakh, yeah. Yeah, because the New Testament wouldn't be written for 300 years. Exactly. So what that did is that inspired me to say, well, if Messiah is uttering these words about him, all scripture, I want to go find as far as Mashiach in as far as Tanakh. And, you know, I want to find him. Got it. We hold a potluck oneg. Yeah. What does that translate to? That, that's a, a dinner. What we do is a potluck and it's a dinner. Like a dinner. At roughly 3.30 p.m. And by the way, if you are watching this and you're in the Salt Lake area, you come here because they're very friendly and they have food galore from what I've seen. Oh, yeah, good so, food. Okay. If you wish to bring food for the potluck, the only request is that you, uh, that it is biblically clean. This interested me. No pork or shellfish products at all. Yes. So you believe uh, in the tenets of Pauline epistles, right? Yeah. So when he says, you know, uh, the, these things of the law, the day, the hour, the seasons, the Sabbath, and all that stuff, when it says that, when Paul talks about how, especially in uh, Galatians with the law, mm -hmm. you know, and how, look at man, the law is not part of the Galatians deal. Are you able to sidestep that, so to speak, because you are Jewish in part? Is that how you're doing? Or are you saying? Yeah. No, I think that really, in all reality, people misconcept as far as who shall who is Paul, the Apostle Paul. Okay. The, the writer declared, actually Peter had declared that as far as that those who are unlearned, if they're not careful, they would actually get Paul's words and they would actually be to their own destruction. Okay. So does Paul believe as far as in as far as the Torah? Is he a follower of Torah? Mm -hmm. I believe that he is. I, I believe see. that as far as Mashiach himself is a follower of Torah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, when Paul says to be dead to the law, what, what does that mean to somebody who's a Messianic Jew? We have to ask ourselves what law are we referring to. Are you referring to the oral law or are you referring to the, you, you referring to the Torah? And, w and what you must be, believe the oral law. I believe as far as it's the oral law. There's things that within the oral law that there are traditions that have been made up in as far as the... Sure. Okay. So by the time Jesus comes on the scene, the written law had been so bastardized that the oral law was taking precedence over the written law and it had been misinterpreted. So you're, what you're saying is... They weren't saying get rid of uh, the law written no. in stone. They were saying get rid of all these oral traditions. What it is is they had placed as far as a, a, a surrounding or a gate around it. Okay, yeah. so there was a lot of things like the washing of the hands and so forth yeah. that they could condemn Yeshua that he didn't wash his hands. Yeah. So there was a lot of that. So we have to be able to get back into Old Testament scriptures to be able to understand really what these mean and then bring them into as far as New Testament times. Understand. And... And, uh, and I agree with that. I think the uh, Tanakh is vital to yes. understanding the, the New Covenant. Yeah. Well, this is what you said in Yemer Yahu 3131, okay? Okay, wait, 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 wait Jeremiah, Yemer Yemer? Jeremiah, thank, thank you. <laughs> chapter 31, verse 31, he talks about as far as that he writes Torah on our heart. What yeah. is the, or well, actually the law, the law is the referred to the word Torah. Yeah. So you'll see that in the book of Hebrews, the 8th chapter, as well as in the 10th chapter. That's right. He talks about that he's writing Torah on a heart. That's right. So if it's done away with, why would he write it here? Well, I mean, just if you're asking me the question, if it's rhetorical, but to me, it's, it's the, all of the law and the prophets hang on the two great commandments. That's what he's writing on the heart. It is not the foods, the dress, the Sabbath, and things. But that's my opinion. Yeah. I won't argue with yeah. that. I tend to believe that as far as it still stands and the reason why, because Moshe, Moses had said that any man that shall take or add from this, yeah. okay, yeah. we're not to take or add. Yeah. Even Yeshua himself was an ambassador of, the, of as far as the Father. Of course. He came, right? He's a representation of the Father. He to goes, his own. Well, he goes on to saying that as far as that there will be a prophet like unto me, yeah. and when he comes, you shall shema, you shall hear and obey sure. all that he has to say. He says, I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak all that I have commanded Absolutely. him. Absolutely. So did Yeshua actually speak all that the Father has commanded? Remember, Yeshua says, all that I speak is not mine, but him that sent sure. me. Sure. These are not my words, but him. Yeah. The will, he goes on to say, but my will is to do the will of him that yeah. sent me and to finish his work. So indeed, he was an ambassador of the Father. 
he spoke of the Father. And I can't disagree with you at all, David. The only thing I would disagree with, at least if this is what you're saying, is that he was talking to them then, and he was talking to the house of Israel to whom he came, and the other sheep which were not of that fold of the Gentiles, to whom Paul was called to go, not Peter, not James. So the Peter and James' writings are going to be very different in application than what Paul's were, but it's beside the point. So you do include the New Testament in the Torah. Absolutely. Okay. I tried to bring in as far as, like I said, Yeshua. Because I'm looking for him. Like, and when you say that, what does that mean? You look in Scripture. I'm looking in as far as the Scriptures, like Yeshua said, all Scripture from Genesis to Isaiah to the Psalms yeah. concerning me. So it's, he's there. It's not tough to find him, is it? Well, there's times that he's actually hidden yeah. way away. I, I you need love eyes the... to see, ears to hear, right? So, so let's go through a few doctrinal points so our group understands. You, uh, those who are uh, following uh, American evangelicalism or who are Orthodox or who are Catholic. So I'm going to just ask you some questions relative to how you see okay. uh, what you're doing. Um, first of all, you're not the only way, right? Oh, no. Okay. I don't believe that we are the only way. I just believe that we're actually a piece. Okay. Right? I mean, of the puzzle? Like, well, just, uh, we're just the body, like we talk about the body of Mashiach, as far as that it, some would play a finger, some would play a hand, but all working together for the common thing. It's a beautiful way to see yeah. it. And I'm glad to hear that from you. Uh, not that it would change anything in our relationship, but it would terrify me if you said, yeah, we're the new church and no one else is right, and you're going to hell, Sean. You know, like, uh, I would be like, okay, but, uh, <laughs> so no, you, don't, right. you don't see it that way. No, I don't. Okay. Um, how about, so then what is the purpose um, in focusing on some things um, that other evangelicals don't, like Sabbath day, like the dietary laws? What is the purpose, and, and I'm not trying to uh, critique you, I'm trying to understand. Okay. When you talk about that on Saturday here, what is the purpose in the life of those people if you're just a part of the body? Mm -hmm. See, I would, to me, if, if, if I was messianic like you and I was meeting on a Saturday or from Friday to Saturday night or whatever it is, and I was saying no pork products and stuff, I would be teaching this is the right way. Mm -hmm. And those guys out there who are, who are uh, choosing Sunday and eating pork sandwiches right now are absolutely an offense to God. That's how I would do it, but okay. I'm a man. Why, why don't you see it that way, or do you? Well, no, I actually believe as far as, I believe in the, di the dietary laws, that's why I'm living it. Yeah. I was, uh, like I said, I was evangelical for 43 years. Right. Now I see this, what am I doing? I'm actually trying to join forces with my brother Judah. Okay. Okay? Okay. In other words, the whole thing of all this is to reconcile all things into Mashiach, his self. Okay. Okay, so I believe that I'm hearing his voice and he's reconciling us, bringing us back to our brother. Okay. There has to be unity. Okay. There has to be the oneness, the singleness of mind. Okay. There has to be, uh, how can two walk together except they, something's got to bring us there. At 50,000 religions, something's wrong. Okay. So we need to look back into the Old Testament scriptures, into the Hebrew text, because maybe as far as there's something lost in translation. Okay. So your point in sharing this with your uh, congregates on Saturday is to say we're trying to help bridge and bring together, not separate ourselves not separate through these ourselves. practices. Yeah. Well, that's unique. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, like I said, we see as far as the, the Old Testament, we believe that as far as it's, it's relevant for the day. So what it is, is there something that's been enlightening to us? We're wanting to walk it out. Let me ask you another one. So how about the ontology or makeup of God? Are we talking Trinity? Well, at this time, well, no. I'm, and the pause a, is awesome. Well, hold on. I love the pause. The That's thing, all I can say. Okay. But the thing is, though, you got to remember that I'm on a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, would I respect the journey. Believe I, me. I would uh, tell you as far as I believed in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the, you know, the rule. The three and so one. And yeah, and so forth. You did believe it. Yeah. I don't know what I hold at this present time. All right, brother. No. I'm right with you, man. There's no wrong answer here. You could say, no, I'm, I'm a modalist. You can say, Benny, I don't care. I just want to know where you're at. It's fascinating to me that a man devout, and you have a heart of devotion. I can see it. You're, you're there. You're earnest for this, that you could go through 42 years or whatever it was of evangelicalism, and you've come to now study uh, the Tanakh, and now you say, say Trinity, and you pause for a minute, and you're like, well, I'm on a journey. Hey, I, I love it, yeah. you know, because we're always learning, right. aren't we? Right, we are. Yeah. 
Well, we're supposed to be being changed from glory to glory, mm -hmm. even by the Spirit of the Lord, right? Sure. So every succession should become a little more glorious. Should be. Yeah. We can't remain as who we used to be because right. that's not where He wants us to be. Awesome. Right? Until that perfect day. So now, as uh, in what is going on here, let's say I stumble in off the street. I, understand, I get here because I smell the food and it really smells great. I come and listen to you and I stream the tears. Mm -hmm. what, is, what are you going to tell me as the leader of the group teacher? What are you going to tell me is necessary for me to understand about salvation, uh, the kingdom? Mm -hmm. I mean, what would be the message you give to somebody who comes in here on Sunday? On it, Saturday? It'd be the same thing that we, we believe that as far as Yeshua indeed was the lamb, or okay. he is the lamb, uh -huh. that taketh away the sins of the world, right? That he atoned for man, that he, he's the ultimate sacrifice. Okay. Okay, he now was sacrifices, and now he's actually our high priest, our Kohen Kedal. Okay. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding in behalf of us. I would actually lead them as far as through prayer. You know what? Yeah, we need to cast all of our cares on him. We need to confess. Because it says that, hey, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sure. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? Yeah. We know that scripture. Yeah. That's what we would do. We would lead them as far as that they can come to know and have a personal relationship. Yeah. As far as with Yeshua, they can. Okay. And so would you uh, agree that that would... Uh, if it did occur in my life as a stranger wandering in here and then starting to fellowship with you, if it did occur, is that the moment of salvation? Um, I don't know that if it's the moment of salvation. I believe that as far as that you're on a journey. Okay. In spite of where you're at, he already knows. Remember, you didn't come to him. He came to you. Right, right. He, you didn't call him. He called you. Sure. So in spite of, he, like even David has said, that in my mother's womb I was conceived in sin. Yeah. All messed up already, aren't we? Yeah. And so anyway, we know that all have sinned mm -hmm. and we fell short. Mm -hmm. So, but we know that as far as that God's already been uh, working on you in the journey, he just happened to bring you to the house. Okay. But he's already been at work, right? Sure. So you already responded to him. You've come. Okay. You've been listening to him. So okay. I believe that as far as that, you know, you've been on a journey with him. Okay. And as far as that, he's been leading you on your way. But it says when we confess with our mouth that we believe in our heart that yeah. Yeshua has rose from the dead, right. that you shall be saved. Shall be saved, yeah. Yes. So is that still part of your vernacular? Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. So then once that happens with me in your congregation, do I then, do you then say, well, now that you have received him, uh, we want to teach you why it's important to not eat pork sandwich. <laughs> you know what I say? Huh. I say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Dude, and we, I like and we you. We all have to work it all out. I love because you. Because you have to work it out, I have to work it out. Yes. In other words, everyone's on a journey, and every man to be accountable for his own actions. Yeah. To compare ourselves among ourselves is not wise. For we have one to compare to, and that is Yeshua. You're a wise man. You're, you know the Lord, you know the Word. And the beautiful thing about it is, I absolutely believe that somebody who is seeking to follow the Lord and says, Pork sandwiches are not for me. Look what it says here. I respect them. I respect anybody who has something they say, this is I'm doing, and I don't care what you think of it, so my hat's off to you. I'm really grateful that you're not uh, filled with dogmatism. I thought I might find that here. If you were, I would love you the same, mm -hmm. but you're not. You're, uh, you, you're messianic. Um, we don't add Jew to that, right? We don't add what? I don't add Jew to that, right? You're not a Messianic Jew. You're just well, Messianic. I, I am actually Jew. You so are. I, yeah. But what about but your group? But as far as the congregation, no, I say that as far as that we're just, you know, some that are trying to follow as far as the Jewish Messiah. Really yeah. awesome. Uh, how about resurrection? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. First fruits. He is first fruits. Got it. Shaul goes on to saying that he's a Yom Bikurim, which is the first fruit. Yes, he is. Uh, resurrection, uh, bodily, spiritual, future, past, currently going on. Is there a, do you have a thought on it? I'm just curious as to where you stand on it. No, I believe that as far as the, the, the day is coming, as far as what, uh, and what we call as far as Yom Teru, which is day of trumpets. Okay. Like Paul was said at the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise. Yeah. Yeah, we believe that that day is, is, uh, is upon us. Is upon us? Upon us. Upon us. So... The reason why I state this, having known, or actually, if you understand Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it deals with the Feast of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're not the Feast of the Jews, let me remind you that. Mm -hmm. Although we associate them with the Jews, but they're the Feast of yod heh Okay. So, he goes on to saying that there in the seventh, uh, he goes on to saying in the seventh month, the first day of the month, 
which is Yom Teruah, is the day of blowing. Okay. That happens in the fall feast. Okay. First, the, the spring feast have already happened. Yeshua fulfilled all that. Okay. Okay. He died as far as he was buried and he resurrected. He's our first fruit. Okay. okay. Now, for over 2,000 years, as far as the people of Israel had been out of the land. Okay. Now they've been in the land. They're going back to the land. Jerusalem is actually the capital of Jerusalem. The Hebrew language is now the language. Guess what? The fall feasts are about ready to happen. Got it. They have to be home for the fall feast to begin. So does this coincide too, and I'm just throwing this out because I've, I've heard smatterings of it from other people I know, uh, with blood moons and things. Is that part of this? No, a lot of people associate the blood moons with it, and there's a lot of people that have stated, hey, blood moons, this and that, but... Yeah. Nothing's yeah. really panned out, has it? And have you ever considered the idea when Josephus re, uh, talked about the history of the Jews and the destruction of Jerusalem that the trumpets uh, were being fulfilled that are talked about in Revelation and they happened in the past? Have you considered that? or No. You, no. Okay. no. Now, the reason why is because uh, if you understand his feast, everything's based on his feast and it's all prophetic about the, the Messiah. Got it. So the fall feasts haven't happened. If that was the case, we wouldn't be here. Got it. But we're waiting. We're long awaiting that day. All right. Uh, and it couldn't have been captured in an age where the fall feast did occur, but it was for that age. No. No. Okay. No. Uh, sin? How would you talk about define sin? All unrighteousness. So um, can you elaborate on that a little bit for me? Well, it's actually, it, sin is actually going against as far as the instruction okay. against Torah. So if that's the case, so we're talking, let's say, Sabbath day. Yeah. You know, we know that Sunday, unlike what our Mormon friends tell us, is not the Sabbath, darn it. It's we, not the Sabbath. We know what the Sabbath day is. What, do we, we know? know? We, we do know. Okay. And it's not what we do on Sunday. And if there's practicing of the Sabbath, you're doing it. Yes. So if, so I'm trying to understand, you seem pretty, I'm going to say liberal, or open to different people's progress. But we've got a billion people around the world who are calling Sunday a Sabbath. Right. Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday, darn it. Right. And, and you are doing the Sabbath the right way. And you said that sin is when you aren't doing it the right way. So is, are the billion in sin? Well, yes, I would say yes. Okay. Um, but I'm not to tell them I know that. you're not the judge. I'm not the judge. I'm not their jury. The okay. idea is they have to come to that, that understanding all on their own. I see. Okay. We have to wor work out our own salvation and we got to work it out our own self. Yeah, yeah. I had to come to that knowledge and realize, hey, I was doing Sunday service. And as I begin, in, begin to get into Torah, I understood mm -hmm. that as far as there is a day, mm -hmm. there's a day that is not like any other day. It's mm -hmm. the Shabbat. Okay. It's been said, he, he calls it day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, mm -hmm. day six. Shabbat is mm -hmm. the only day that he gave as mm -hmm. far as that seventh day. Got it. That's his day. Uh, we could go round and round, but I'm not here to debate with you on that. I'm just curious as to the teaching. So how about tithes? Yeah, I believe in tithing. You do? Yeah, and the reason I'll tell you that, because even though there is no temple, okay? Yeah. Um, as far as that we who are in the diaspora and so forth, yeah. The New Testament deals as far as with tithing. Not only that, the Old Testament deals with as far as tithing. The New would be tough to justify in well, my estimation, it, but the Old... Well, think about it as far as in the New Testament, it says all it says, right? They gave, went ahead, they gave them to as far as the disciples. They had all things promised. So it was a community. Everybody gave all that they had. That was communism. Yeah. Is that what it was? Communism? Yeah, it wasn't tithing. That was well, that get, all they, that you have. All that you have. Yeah. But all is his anyway, right? Sure. He just lent it to you. You're just as far as the steward sure. of his word, I just right? wonder about the 10% or whatever. It's the 10%. Tithe. Yeah. So in addition to the 10%, the Old Testament does talk about more. There's more than just the 10. There's, there's a lot of different applications, if I understand the Tanakh. But hold on now. But you're talking about a first year, third year tithing? Yeah, that and, kind and of And so stuff. you have to get into that. You have to understand. Do what you all, get into that? I do get into that. I see. I do. So if I remember right from uh, the school I went to, you're talking about about a 24% uh, when we did all the math on the different ties calculated out and strewn over like a 10 year period. It's not just the, to the 10% because it's a lot more than that. And you believing and following the Tanakh think that that is certainly part of obeying. Well, the 10%, right. The ten because every 10th is his, not yours, not mine. It's his. Got it. So they would give it to as far as them. And not only that, he talks about as far as in Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter, 
the dirt to actually go ahead and he says it's a way be too far for you that you get the produce you convert it over to money and you yeah. bring it to Jerusalem yeah okay what are yeah. you doing you're giving it to the poor in other words tithing that you're doing on this one mm -hmm. it's not only for uh, the Kohan but it's for yourself and it's for the poor for the widows and so forth yeah sure yeah so it's uh, all about giving laws of uh, we only got five minutes left David laws of purity do you, do you have mikvahs? I mean, are, are, are women during their time considered unclean? Where do you draw the line with this stuff? No, I, I do believe as far as that there is a state of purity that one must have be in a state of purity as we begin to approach it. You're, we are approaching as far as the king. Yeah. There's a protocol. We don't just come to him any way we are. Mm. We got to come to him and prepare, uh, pure our, purify ourselves, right? Oh, I see. So that. as we begin to ascend up, Avia, we begin to ascend up to him each level is a little more pure than the one before wow almost sounds like masonry yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it yeah. but the idea is that he's the king and we're not awesome. and we are approaching his throne so how about him cleaning us through the shed blood of christ and it's the heart that's clean not the outer vessel and that what goes into the body is not is not what makes a man unclean but what comes out right. what do you think of all that i think that it's wonderful but i do believe that as far as that we have to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves you know what I mean? We have to check we, yourself before you wreck yourself. Yes, we have. You hearken back to your preaching days on that one. Didn't you? <laughs> uh, hey, I'm a preacher at heart. You I'm just are. waiting for a pulpit. Yeah, you got one, buddy. You don't need a pulpit. You got it naturally. Uh, so you do believe in, in, in even separation? Like it, it, I mean, yeah. I so do. if a woman has a child and it's a female, do you believe in. So then what about stoning and things? I, I'm yeah. seeing how far this goes because. Yeah. There are so many things that are not just traditions. They are written in the Tanakh. They are written in so the Tanakh. So do you stone an adulterer? No, no, we don't. That one you'll, you'll I mean, I'm not making fun of you. I just want to, no. that one you'll say, okay, we're done. But, but you know what? I mean, I'm still searching and I'm still looking. I can't give you an honest answer because I don't know. Got it. Okay. Once I've done a, a lot of, remember, I've only been in as far as this walk, maybe, maybe four years, but I'm working on it. Got it. I'm looking into it. I'm not afraid to look. Right. And I'm willing to examine myself to find out who I am, where I am, and where I'm going from here. I appreciate that about you. Yeah. And, and I respect it. And there's no criticism, no judgment either. This is what you believe. And I think that what we believe is how we're going to be seen by God. He's going to say, you believe this. You didn't do it. You're in trouble. You know, yeah. that's, that's how I see it, wrong as that might be. Listen, we've got three minutes left. I've thoroughly enjoyed learning about who's meeting here on Saturdays just by seeing you guys and waving and, yeah. and everything else. Final uh, comment you get the final word there's the camera that you could share with anybody who's seeking who's lost who's seeking to grow more learn more what would you have to say okay what I have to say that if you're on a journey you know because there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of church hopping they're not satisfied with they're at they're looking for something far deeper because I know that there's a lot of milk out there and a lot of people you know are tired of the milk but the meat belongeth to them that are aged and if you're wanting to have a little deeper relationship, want a little more, a little more understanding, understanding uh, about as far as the Jewish Messiah, because his Jewishness has actually been taken away from him. He's king of the Jews, meaning that as far as he would follow all the precepts of his father. So if you're wanting something more from that, there's actually on the, on the bottom there, there's as far as our name, our number, we would love to have you come. And uh, we just open up the word. We'd open up the word. That's why we called ourselves Beth Lechem. Mm. It's the house of bread. Mm. If you're hungry, come. Mm. Come and eat. Participate with us. That's all I would say as far as if one is on a journey and he's looking for something far deeper, come. Praise God. Yeah. What time do you meet? We've been meeting. At, we started at, at this time about 3 o'clock on Saturdays okay. here at this place. And uh, dress code? No dress code. Okay. Bringing food? You can bring, we do potlucks on Saturday. Like we said, it's got to be as far as clean. <laughs> this has to be kosher. Kosher, okay. Yeah. And that really means no just, pork. Yeah, no pork, no shellfish, so on and so forth. Just okay. maintain as far as the dietary laws, right? And anything else during the week you guys are doing? No, not at this time. Not it, at this time. If I guess we were to have this place as far as during the midweek, maybe there would be some midweek services. I don't know. Right. Just right now, we're just doing as far as Shabbos. We're doing Shabbos. And you have, you have a website, and, it is, and, and, the, and the name of it is? Kehilot Beth Lechem. He made okay. it very easy. Type that out. It's <laughs> kehilotbethlechem.org is really our website. Okay. That's where that's at. And that tells you a lot about what they're doing. Do we have a graphic for them? 
It's in the link below. In the link below, we're at our last minute. David, uh, really fascinating. And uh, I, I love you as a brother. I praise love God you for your, your, uh, your faith in uh, Yeshua. I praise uh, Yahweh for your love for him, seeking him in spirit and truth. Yeah. And uh, no difference when we head up there. I, we're going to be up there with uh, those who love the Lord. And I'm really grateful for you taking the time and for the way you treat the building and, and your congregates are so polite. And I would invite anybody who's seeking and wants to learn more about this, come see it. We're here Saturday, Salt Lake City. Our address is, uh, you can see it on the link below. Thanks, brother. Thank you, bro. All right. And Thank we'll you so see much. you next week here on Heart of the Matter.